In this video, we're going to explore the primitives and the retopo models palette, which provides presets for either retopology projects or poly modeling. So let's get started by clicking on the primitives tool. Let me first hide the underlying voxel object and adjust the subdivision amount. I can also make adjustments with a gizmo. Let's switch to the cube. And one of the first things you might notice in the tool options panel is a fillet option. If I check that, I can also adjust the number of segments on that fillet. Let's change it to four. And I can reset axis, reset size, align it to view if I need. I'll reset it. And these are some very common options that you'll typically see whenever you're working inside the application. Let me also point out that when you have uniform division checked, that your axis parameters are locked. So the only thing that you can adjust is the overall subdivision amount or the chamfer segments. You'll also notice the estimated poly count in the lower right hand corner. If I were to move the primitive for any reason and decide later on that I want to get it right back to the very center, I can just click this X button and that will zero it out in just one click. Okay, let's go ahead and scale it up, hovering over the very center of the cube. The circle that you see here in the middle is essentially just a screen space move handle. Again, I'll center it back up. And obviously with our widgets, we can make some standard transforms along a given axis. You can hover over a widget, any one of these, left mouse click and hold while you hit the space bar. That will allow you to enter a numeric value. Okay, let's say maybe 90 degrees. And there you go. These widgets are color coded, so it does help the user to know exactly which axis you want to rotate, scale, or move along. Let's adjust our fillet radius here. And I'm going to unhide the underlying voxel object. One of the most handy features about this particular tool set is the ability to quickly align the object using this click to place feature. You'll notice that when I check it, a few different options are now available that were not before. One is to scale the brush radius and the other is to use the stroke direction, meaning that 3D Coat is going to utilize the normal vectors beneath your brush to help orient this primitive when I place it. So let's go ahead and do that now. Let's scale our brush up to approximately the size that we want to use. We can right click and drag left and right or we can use our bracket keys like you would in Photoshop. Let's say I'm happy with that. I'm just gonna click on the surface and it's just that easy. Now maybe I want to change the rotation just a bit and I can scale it. Now, once I'm done positioning my object, I like to get in the practice of unchecking click to place. And the reason for that is if I don't, I typically will forget that is checked and should I touch any part of this surface, then it's automatically going to reposition it. So let's uncheck that and now hit apply. If you do not see anything, then what has happened is 3D Coat has probably placed it somewhere outside of your view. And that is because we have something wrong with the scene scale. We need to change it or to set it back to the default. So I'm going to clear this mesh from the layer. I'm going to step over into the Sculpt workspace temporarily. And in the Geometry menu, I can edit the Scene Scale. The Scene Scale is by default 1. So it's quite large and it's also moved well out of our view. So let's go ahead and change it now. If you've imported an object, sometimes it can change your Scene Scale and the position. So let's zero these out. Hit OK. Now, in the Retopo workspace, let's hit Apply. I'm going to choose another tool so that I can see the result. 
because 3D Coat will leave this gizmo and this preview object intact, assuming you want to continue using it, unless you select another tool, which we will do. All right, now we can see the result. So let's zoom in. Maybe I want to make some changes to this, so I can select all faces on the layer by selecting this icon. And let's choose a transform tool. I would highly suggest checking auto fit in local space if you plan to use the transform tool much in a given setting because 3D Coat will automatically align the gizmo in local space each time you come back to the transform tool. Otherwise, it's going to be oriented in world space like this rather than local space. Let's choose two main axis and I'll click in the center on the little global scale cube. And I want to show one small trick that you can use to create a Boolean if you so choose. We don't yet have that capability inside this workspace. However, we can step into the Sculpt workspace, create the Boolean, and then get that object right back. So let's do that now. I'm going to go to the Sculpt workspace. And I'm going to create a new layer to place this copy on. Now let's go to Geometry, Retopple Mesh to Sculpt Mesh. If you plan to use this feature quite often, I would highly suggest hitting the end key over the top of this option and assigning a hot key to it. So let's do that now. I'll hit the end key and I'm going to assign the hot key R to it. So let's hit our R key and it's instantly placed into the scene. Now, if I turn wireframe on, go into the view menu under wireframe, I can see it's low poly just like it is in the Retopo workspace. Nothing has really changed. So there are a couple different ways that I could perform this Boolean operation. Let's say I want to keep this object and I want to create a duplicate. So this one I'm going to use as a cutting object. I'm going to use it to subtract from the original volume here. But I want to make sure that I have the right layer selected. So I can just hover over this object hit the H key and it's automatically going to select that layer. I will select this cutting object. I'm going to hold down the control key and drag this little move icon over the top of the layer that I want to subtract from. It has created the subtraction. I'm going to turn wireframe off. Now I can unhide the copy that we created. I skip forward just a moment while I look for the same shader that I had on the main object. And hit the space bar to bring the tool panel to us. And I can use the transform gizmo to move this or to scale it. One thing you may notice is I'm seeing the low polygon wireframe. Why is that? Well, it's because I previously had the Conform Retopple Mesh option in the tool panel selected. When you use the Transform tool, Move tool, or the Pose tool in the Sculpt workspace, if there is a corresponding Retopple object visible, then 3D Coat will try to conform that Retopple object at the same time. So when I make an adjustment here, it's going to perform the same operation to the Retopo mesh as well. So let's go ahead and try and hover over that center cube. We'll scale it in just a bit. And that's really all there is to it. So I can uncheck that conform Retopo mesh and I no longer see the wireframe. So let me just the gizmo. I'm holding down the shift key to reorient just the gizmo. And again, I can check Conform Retopple Mesh and make that Retopple Mesh move right along with it. I'm seeing two gizmos, and that's because in the Retopple workspace, I have that selected and I have this gizmo visible as well. So I really need to hit the Escape key, and I'll hit it a second time, and that's going to drop the selection. The first one deselects the tool. The second time, it drops the selection. Okay, so... I can see the result now, and if I want, I could create another one. So let's go to the Primitives tool. I'm going to create a new layer. I'll name this one Cylinder, and hit OK. 
and I will choose this one. One option for this that's rather unique is the ability to remove caps. I'm going to adjust the sides first. And again, if I want, I can remove caps. I also have the fillet option here. And should I add more height divisions, you'll notice it gives me more geometry to refine that fillet. Let's scale that down. And what I'll do is use our click to place option again. Use my bracket keys. And I'll click. Now let's push it in just a bit. I need to go ahead and hit apply. That's going to commit it to the layer. Now when I step out, I can see that mesh. Again, in our sculpt room, I will go to the geometry menu again. Retopo mesh to sculpt mesh and it placed it as a child layer. I'm going to hold the shift key and drag it over the top of the parent. Now with that done, I can take this other layer and I can ghost it so I can see through. And I will create a duplicate of this one as well. I'm going to use this duplicate as a cutting object. I'll hide the original. Instead of holding down the control key and dragging it on top, we'll try another method to performing the subtractive boolean operation. By right clicking over the layer, click on the picker, and now come over and select the object I want to subtract from. Okay. Now, what I'm seeing in the viewport, again, is that retopple mesh. Let me uncheck that. Now all we see is our boolean. I'll zoom in and hit my hotkey for wireframe. It's still in a very low polyon state, just like we have in the Retopo workspace. Okay, and so now with that done, if I want, I can get this object right back into the Retopo workspace as a separate object. I want to rename this because I want this to be placed in a separate layer all on its own. I'll double click. Now all I have to do is right click and I can choose Retopo via decimation. It's similar to the option that we used in the geometry menu, but we can access it from a right click menu. It's going to ask me if I want to decimate. In this case, I do not. So I just reduce my reduction percent to zero and I can see the polygon count is exactly the same. So I'll hit OK. And now it moves me back into the Retopo workspace. So I have a copy of this object, both in the sculpt workspace, if I want to continue doing some further work, and I also have a copy here in the Retopo workspace.